Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here. Today I'm bringing you what I was originally planning to be transfer rumor slash roundup. Gonna bring that out later though, because when I was recording this, I realized that I spoke about the boost target I've got for about eight minutes. So I thought, why not just make it a full video? So it's about Paul Pogba, the 100 million pound bid that's being widely reported by the top sources around the world, including Damasio, Sky Sports News, BBC, Sport, like every, everywhere, is in agreement that we've set aside 120 million euros, which equates to 100 million Great British pounds for the transfer of Paul Pogba. Now, I'm not sure if you know, because I haven't heard anyone mention it, no one at all, that we left, uh, we let Paul Pogba go for free in 2012. <sighs> I bet you're as surprised as me. I've never heard that before. We let him go for free. I mean, wow, that's that's unbelievable. In, in all honesty, of course, it was a mistake. And of course, everyone knows. And that was the worst attempt at sarcasm ever. But yeah, obviously, we let him go for free. And that was a mistake. But it's been widely reported. Sir Alex Ferguson said himself the entire reason for it in his book. And it was because of his relationship with his agent, Mino Raiola. He, he described the relationship as oil with water, they didn't mix, and uh, what Ferguson wanted is Pogba to sign the one-year extension on his contract that was there. All he had to do was sign it, because uh, his three-year deal had expired, but he didn't because Mino Raiola fell out with Ferguson and decided to look around, managed to get him a deal at Juventus, persuaded Pogba and his family to go to Juventus, and there's where we stand. Unfortunately, we lost him for about 250 grand in compensation fees. But now we are willing to set aside 100 million to bring him back. And of course, there's no Sir Alex Ferguson at Manchester United in terms of the manager anyway, he's an ambassador. And we've got a great relationship with Mino Raiola now, having signed two of his clients in Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Henrik Mkhitaryan. So, do I think the deal is likely? Yes. Do I still fear Real Madrid? Yes. Purely because if they sell Morata and if they sell James Rodriguez, that'll free up the funds. It is, however, being widely reported that they don't want to spend more than 60 million on Paul Pogba, which gives us an advantage. It's also being widely reported that Paul Pogba's first choice is Real Madrid because of Zinedine Zidane, his hero. He's went through that a lot before. But that Mina Raiola wants him to go to Manchester United because the financial benefit for himself and Paul Pogba will be greater and uh, yeah I, I kind of believe that but if Real Madrid are not willing to pay 60 million more than 60 million then that frees the door for Manchester United because we're willing to smash the world record transfer fee not just break it smash it by 15 million with our first bid in order to get Pogba now that should show how much we want the player like if Pogba sees that and he sees the first bid 100 million surely that's got to mean something like that shows how much we want him, how much we value him as a player. And um, hopefully, because of Mourinho, because of a whole host of other things, because of his agent, uh, you know, speaking in his ear, hopefully he'll come back to us. I don't care what the fee is. Why? Why? I don't understand why people use it as a criticism. It, it's only a criticism if it doesn't work. Fair enough. Then you can have banter, like Liverpool spent 35 million for Carroll. We've spent... 60 million for Di Maria and it didn't work fair enough but before players joined wh why are you bothered what they pay like it's not coming out of your money w wouldn't you prefer your club to spend money to overspend even if you, you do overspend you get your players in the end like these are our first targets we've got our top three targets for a combined total of less than we bought Angel Di Maria it's reported that we've got 200 million to spend so even if this 100 million deal for Paul Pogba goes through, that leaves about 44 million. Like, it's not going to dent our finances. We've got record-breaking deals with Chevrolet, with Adidas, with a million other sponsorships. It doesn't matter. It's better than going in the Glazers' pocket. So if someone laughs at how much we paid for someone that we let go uh, four years ago, really couldn't care less. It just generates fear because they know this is a player that we really need. And that is workhorse as an engine is hopefully one of the final pieces to building the heart of a world class team. Because with with Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Henrik Mkhitaryan, Paul Pogba, if it comes off, that's incredible to go alongside David de Gea, upcoming youth in Rashford, Martial, Luke Shaw. Like we've got a very solid team should this deal come come through. So 100 million, pay it. 
we're not going to get better. We cannot get a better midfielder for the long term. Of course, there's a worry that in three, four years, if he did come to Man United, he would go to Real Madrid, which, of course, is the worry. But again, if we're spending that much now, we're not going to let him go for cheap in three, four years. So we would deal with that problem if and when it happens. So, yeah, he's got two choices on the board. Of course, UV could reject. Like, that is the main thing. They could reject, but... A world record transfer fee, they could use 100 million to get in the next big thing. For example, they're linked to players like Matic, Kante. They could get them 20, 30 million, not even dent their finances, and they're still a quality player. Admittedly, probably not good as Pogba in terms of what he can be in the future, and even now perhaps, but still, like they, they'd have so much money. Like I can't see Juventus rejecting that sort of bid. And of course, Real Madrid... They, it's still that inkling, although it's reported that they are only willing to pay 60 million, especially if our offer gets accepted. Um, it's reported that it's going to be um, presented by Mino Raiola to Juventus on Monday by De Marzio, and uh, we all know how uh, reliable he is. So on Monday, the offer will be made official. Then we'll see what Juventus do. Will they accept? Will they reject? If they accept, then it's down to Real Madrid. And literally, that's the last hurdle. If they don't want to match it, and they can't get a bid accepted by Juventus, then of course Pogba, I mean, he could stay to go at Juventus, but we're tripling his wage. There's all that stuff. And if he can sacrifice one year without Champions League football, then, yeah, we've got our man. And that would mean we've got our four priority targets. Then we go into the tour, we'll see who we're going to sell, and then we'll get any capable replacements. Of course, Mourinho said he wanted four signings. But he also said they were the fundamental signings and after that he'll sell players, buy any replacements. So it's not as though these are going to be our only four signings. These are just the four linchpins of this summer. Like They're the four main signings he wanted done as soon as possible before he sells anyone. Which is the way we should have done it under Van Hal and under Moyes but we didn't. So yeah, I generally at the minute I'm 70-30 for this deal to happen. 70 yes, 30 no. Of course, I've got a 30% because we all know Real Madrid. I mean, no matter what court appeals or whatever's going on with them, if they really want to play a generally, they usually get in with the exception, thankfully, of David De Gea because of that fax machine. Yes, get in. If we'd have lost him, that would have been, that'd have been too much to handle. But yeah, we'll see what happens with this deal. As I say, I'll have my uh, transfer rumour slash roundup episode out later today, so look out for that. But hopefully you have enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, and yeah, peace.